So there is nothing creative or special about the hand truck system. Pretty much a million YouTubers have made it, DIY channels, solar channels, and we need to do better. Doing the same project over and over again gets really boring. And this system has some serious limitations. For example, scalability. If you want to split phase output or if you want to add more batteries, it gets very difficult. So today we're going to build something better. Now a month ago I bought these tool carts and they can hold 500 pounds. And I was looking at it and I was like, why don't we just stack some batteries down here and then put an inverter under the top lid. And then we can put whatever we want up here. Now this is the most common size car and it would work great for a 12 volt system, but absolutely not for a 48 volt system. But then I went on Amazon and I found out they build large ones and it's wide enough to support a server rack battery and a large split phase inverter. And look at the size difference. This thing's huge, but they have the same weight rating. And if we load this thing up with batteries, we'll actually exceed it, unfortunately. But just by a small amount. But most of the weight will be at the bottom, so I think it should be okay. So let's get started. Let's put an inverter on this first and wire it up. So technically I could fit the 6000 XP underneath here, but it would take up all of this space. So to make this easy to follow for beginners, we're just going to slap it on top. Now one reason I wanted to mount it underneath was so that the air intakes in the exhaust fans could actually have more room to breathe. This thing is obstructing part of the intake. So I'm gonna have to lift this thing up so it can breathe properly. There will be a version too, okay? This is proof of concept. You could actually back up a small house with this system or a critical loads panel. You could use this for all sorts of things or run a workshop or a cabin or anything. So this thing's rated for 500 pounds, 250 pounds per shelf. We have over 400 pounds on the first shelf and like 65 or 70 pounds on the second shelf. This will be a great test. If I break it, I'll let you guys know. Now all we have to do is wire up these batteries and we're done. Now typically for a battery bank, you wanna connect the positive on this side and then the negative all the way over here. But this is one of their older models and this terminal is very small and we need this size conductor. So we're just gonna to have to mount it right here. And the current we can pull from the second battery will be fine for this inverter. But unfortunately we're creating a current sharing issue. This battery is gonna be cycled harder and the battery at the end will have to play catch up every time you hit high and low states of charge. So not ideal, but we're gonna to have to do it for this system. Now, if that was confusing, please watch my current sharing video where I go in depth. Ooh, it's a little heavy. It seems mostly safe. So everything is wired, communication with the batteries is established, and I think it's ugly. In my mind, I thought it would be so much cooler. So we're gonna redesign and rebuild this thing. So first off, these batteries, having them vertical, not a good idea. We should have them horizontal and facing this way so we can access the terminals, and then we'll have more room to put the inverter below. Because having the inverter on top is really a pointless endeavor. There's nothing here that we need to touch except for the power switch on the side. Everything else, we can control remotely and if we have to flip a breaker it will still be accessible so yeah let's rebuild this thing so it actually looks cool so fast forward a day later and I finished the project this is version 2 we have 20 kilowatt hours down below but I had to use these batteries because these were the only ones that would fit down here now mounting this inverter was quite difficult this thing's pretty heavy so instead of trying to lift this up and mount it with some small bolts, I used some long five inch carriage bolts. And these could reach the holes when the inverter was down here resting on the batteries. And then I would lift it up and then screw each one until it was lifted up all the way. Also, this is clean and clear. So you can have power tools up here. You can have cables up here. And these are the MC4 connectors. So I have a disconnect and I can connect a solar array. And currently I have a 220 volt cord that attaches to my EcoFlow Ultra. So this system has been outputting 3000 watts all morning so that we can discharge these batteries because all these batteries were full. We also have 240 volt charging. So we have a NEMA 1450. We can plug this into the Jackery and it can charge up this system very quickly. 
And the cables don't need to go on top. You can actually tuck them in on the side. And there's space right here for like a circuit breaker box. You could even put some outlets here on the side. And there's holes here, which is great for cable management. You could easily zip tie these cables down. Actually, I should have the cables down here. That would be much nicer. Now I'm using a 650P at the output, but you could use a NEMA 1450 and use a special adapter so you can have 120 volt loads connected to this. So you could just have this. You could charge electric vehicles. You could connect it to a critical loads panel. Actually, I have one. I'll show you. And here it is, a NEMA 1450 to 120 volt outlets. And they probably make one for 650p as well. Also, having three batteries is much easier to move this cart than four. And four is absolutely exceeding the limit. So a lot of you guys will be better with three batteries. Now let's talk about how much this stuff costs. So first off, the cart was $200. Next, the server rack batteries are $1,200 each. And then the inverter is $1,400. And then the wiring was about $200. So $6,600, you get 20 kilowatt hours, a 6,000 watt split phase inverter, and you can connect 8,000 watts of solar panels. Now let's compare that to the price of the EcoFlow Ultra. So each battery is six kilowatt hours, so you have 12 kilowatt hours total. Now the MPPT on this unit is only 4,000 watts, so it's half of our system, but the inverter output is 7,200 watts. So less capacity, but more output. And the price right now with the Black Friday sale is $6,800. And it has almost half the capacity, so that's crazy. If you run this with only two batteries, you get the full output and input of the inverter and it only costs $4,200. Personally, I would get these batteries. That is a fantastic capacity. This much capacity, you can charge an EV or even run a small house. This is pretty good. This is half the capacity of an EP cube and think about how much that costs. Also, you could run two carts, put them into parallel, and then you have a 12,000 watt output. You could put a second 6,000 XP up on top. That would be pretty cool. But for that output, you would have to have three batteries. With one unit, you can do it with only two batteries and you'll be set. Because each battery can output 5,000 watts. Now the big downside here is that this thing is huge. The Ultra is much smaller. Now, if you put two batteries down below, you'd have a lot more room for storage down here and it would be very easy to move. I think a lot of people are just gonna go with that. And you could put a few surge strips on the side of this thing and power anything you want really. Or you could get a smaller cart, use some budget 12 volt batteries and a cheap inverter and you're set. That would cost like nothing. Let's say you use two 300 amp hour watt cycle batteries down below. That would be 7,680 watt hours for $1,000. Then you can buy a cheap 12 volt inverter on Amazon. These things are like 150 to $300. Slap it under here and then you'd have a complete system for under $1,500. And this thing has the same weight rating as the large one. So yeah, I think a lot of people would probably like that better. And those inverters have the outlets built in so you don't even have to add anything. You just slap an inverter and then boom, you're done. I should do that. I need to make a 12 volt version. Now, Jasonoid and also Survival Lily, they have solar YouTube channels. They also built tool cart solar systems. So I guess this is not a new idea, but Man, when I saw this thing, I was like, that would be the coolest system ever. And the amount of output and how easy it is to move around. And this one has large wheels, much larger than the EcoFlow Ultra. So moving this thing around is a lot easier. But again, be careful. This is exceeding the weight rating on here. But I think it should be fine. I just have to go nice and slow. And yeah, I trust these wheels over the EcoFlow wheels any day. And these things are supposed to handle 600 pounds or something. That's crazy. Now, all the tool carts that are rated for a thousand pounds are smaller in metal. I couldn't find a large one like this that can fit these large batteries. So again, if you guys find one, please let me know down below. So I hope you found the video useful. If you have any questions or concerns, please leave them below and I will see you in the next video. Bye.